Hello, fellow heretics and seekers, witches and bitches. Welcome back to Idea Sex, where we take an analytical lens to mysticism and spirituality, the esoteric phenomena not previously understood. My name is Kiara, the Mad Witch, and um, today we're going to swing a little bit anecdotal. So I have been inspired by some of the comments I get on here. And also, I don't know how y'all find me on like Instagram and stuff. I love it when people reach out. So it's, it's not a problem, but other people who have reached out and shared their stories with me, I've been, uh, inspired to talk more about the anecdotal side of psychic phenomena, telepathy, all this weird shit that we talk about on this channel. And you know, I initially, when I started this, I was like, I'm only ever going to talk about this from the scientific point of view, because this is what people take seriously, right? Like maybe if we use like the formal laboratory research and the data and the science to appeal to people's like logical mind, um, maybe that would be more meaningful. But as time has gone on, one of the things I've come to realize is that it's really important that we normalize conversations around psychic phenomena and having these experiences, because one thing that I've realized in having so many people reach out is that these experiences are actually quite common, I think, or they're more common than we might believe. But I think people are afraid to talk about them because they don't want to be written off as crazy. As I like to say, bitch, I am crazy, but I ain't wrong. And so today I thought that I would share a few anecdotes from my life about why I have come to believe the things that I believe um, in regards to life after death, in regards to psychic phenomena, in regards to all of this um, stuff that doesn't really fit within a traditional framework of reality. And for the record, um, I would like to think that I'm a pretty well-adjusted person with good discernment. I've got a very, um, what I feel is like a successful and stable career. And I'm like a functioning member of society. And so I'm not like some complete loon uh, that lives in la-la land. Like I'm actually quite grounded and technical and realistic, which is why these experiences have been really difficult for me to reconcile with the framework of reality that I had for so long. And so today I just want to uh, go through the mental Rolodex of my life and share a few reasons as to why I believe in these things. So the direct experience of psychic phenomena. The truth is I've had more of these experiences than I can possibly recount, but I just thought I'd pull out a couple of the, the juicy stories for you. Think of it like an origin story, if you're interested. And we're gonna cover, I think, three things. So I've got some notes here. <sighs> okay, so first is channeling information I could not possibly have known and was later verified. Two was dream telepathy, where I experienced the same dream as another person, was pretty trippy, um, also verified. And three, uh, precognitive dreams, where I have dreamt things before they happened, and that is not an uncommon occurrence for people, for people in general. It's one of the more common uh, psi experiences. So let's start with channeling. As a young child, I was enamored with fantasy and science fiction, and... Um, <laughs> When I was about eight years old, I had started to write a, well, I'd started to like world build. I was really into like the Tolkien like bestiaries and stuff. And I thought it was amazing that he wasn't just writing stories, but he had built an entire world and then did all the writing based off of that. And so I wanted to do something similar. I was inspired. So I was writing the stories and I was illustrating them and I started building this, this fantasy planet, whatever, when I was about eight years old. And it was through this project that I started having some of my first um, channeling experiences channeling being when you receive information and you don't know where it comes from. And there's, I, I've never, I, I hope to come across someone who's experienced what I have, but um, for the most part, when you hear about channeling, something like, uh, where is it? I got it up there on a shelf somewhere, the holograph. Oh, it's right here. So this is an example of a channeled work. It's called The Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot. And um, when people channel books, and there's some really famous ones out there, like the Seth material or um, or the Abraham Hicks material, and it's this idea that people can open their consciousness up to other entities, right? Whether they're aliens or angels or um, just like a, a higher consciousness, and they can receive information that they otherwise wouldn't have access to. And so they write some pretty ground groundbreaking stuff like um, Michael Talbot did here. My experience was a little bit 
different. It wasn't information because I was writing fiction. It was uh, word for word text that I would find in other places. And this freaked me out. So I would write something. I would write, you know, at first it was just a sentence, um, but I'd be writing a, a fantasy story and I would have a sentence in there. And weeks or months later, I would find that exact sentence in a book I had never read before. And um, at first I just thought it was like coincidence. And I kept trying to rationalize it, but it started happening more and more and like with greater and greater segments of text until, <laughs> until one day there was a, I had written like an entire two paragraphs and it was like this really like, like obscure metaphor. Um, and I, it, I had no reason to think that it wasn't original. And then a month later, I picked up a book I had never read before called The Way of the Shadows by Brent Weeks. And I found that exact same, almost word for word, those two paragraphs in his book. And I flipped out because, well, for, for a few reasons. One, that's not supposed to be possible. And two, I was like terrified I was gonna get accused of, of plagiarism. I was really like a good kid. <laughs> and so I went to the only person I thought I could trust with this, who was my eighth grade English teacher, Mrs. Burner. I loved her. And I tried to explain to her what happened. And she was like, she was so confused. She just kind of looked at me blankly and she was like, well, do you read a lot? And I was like, yes, but I have never read this book. She probably thought that I was like crazy or just overly imaginative or making things up. Um, but you know, all I know is my own experience and that's what I'm here to share. I will say that interactions like that is part of what made me so afraid of the experiences that I did have as a child. It's, it's really difficult to, you know, have an experience that doesn't fit within most people's framework of reality. And that was one of the reasons why I started to shut this down. Like I really wanted it to go away, um, especially because I didn't have control over it. And like I said, I was afraid that I was gonna get accused of like plagiarizing or something. I was like, what if I had put that out somewhere like in a like student um, magazine or something and someone had accused me of plagiarizing and it would have definitely looked like that even though I had never read that book. So that plus a number of other experiences um, started to instigate a lot of fear in me. And I tried to shut these things out until my spiritual awakening in 2017, where all of this resurfaced, the floodgates were reopened. But in that interim, I did have a couple of experiences with my first boyfriend, which I feel like I should absolutely touch on because these are, these are wild. So we'll just talk about, um, dream telepathy. And if you're not familiar, dream telepathy is where you have the same dream as another person. And I should give a little bit of context um, because I've never experienced this again. And I think that the reason I did have this experience is because I was so closely bonded to this person. So, um, Stefan was my like first, first boyfriend. I didn't date anyone before. I didn't love anyone after. And we were like joined at the hip for better, or for worse. <laughs> and I look back at that. I'm like, holy shit, that was like so gross and codependent. But at the time I was like, you were my forever person. And um, we were young and dumb and he moved across the country with me when I decided that I wanted to go to college in Virginia. And so we were, we were living in Virginia. We'd moved together from California at 18 years, young, stupid, 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 stupid. And <laughs> he was staying over at my dorm one night. We had fallen asleep. And at that point in my life, I didn't have many, I, I mean, everyone dreams at night, right? But I didn't remember most of my dreams and they were never really vivid and they didn't make sense. Like my dreams never made sense. They didn't like have a plot or anything. It would be something like four nuns beating up a clown. Makes zero sense. I'm sure a Jungian analysis would have like a field day with my dreams. Let's not go there. Suffice to say, my dreams were garbage and I mostly never remembered them. But on this particular night, I had a dream that felt like I was literally in a science fiction movie and, um, in the dream, Stefan and I were fighting a war on another planet. This sounds so stupid. <laughs> nice. Oh, okay, but this is my experience and I'm here to share it. So I had this dream that literally, it felt so real. I, and we were, we were fighting like an alien war on another planet. And we woke up the next morning and I, I told him, I was like, 
Well, all I said to him was, I had the weirdest dream last night and you were in it. And he was like, oh my God, me too. And he proceeded to tell me the exact dream, the exact dream that I had. I would have him come on here and testify, but um, he's dead. He hung himself a few years ago. So, oh God, I, I don't really like getting so personal on the channel. Normally I don't because my life has been honestly so strange. And at 26, I feel like I've been here forever. <laughs> Whatever. I can't say, I can't say it hasn't been an adventure. It's just all been very strange. Needless to say, kind of an interesting but related side note, um, his fiance, so Stefan and I had broken up a few years prior to his death and he had gone on to date and become engaged to a really wonderful woman. And we uh, became friends for a short while after his death, reconnected. And she told me about the after-death communication she had with him. And if you're not familiar, ADCs are um, messages we get from departed loved ones when we're grieving. Um, and they're usually very comforting. And I had read about these and I'd heard stories about them. I just experienced this for the first time this past fall. If you're interested, you can check out the video there for that also weird story. Suffice to say, when the dream telepathy thing happened, I had no idea what to make of it. I was still at that point in my life very much in denial that these things were even possible. And um, e even though, even though I had had a number of precognitive dreams growing up. So I'm an open-minded skeptic. It's just, I've had so many strange experiences and how do I reconcile that with the reality that I've been told is reality. It's, it's a constant struggle, let me tell you. Last but not least, I would love to share a few uh, anecdotes around precognitive dreams with you. So precognitive dreams or precog is when we dream something before it happens. And I actually know a lot of people who have had at least one of these in their life. Uh, I had a lot of them as a kid. And then that like that psychic dry spell, whatever you want to call it. And then just started happening again recently in 2021. I had two dreams this year and I'll tell you about them both. So I'll just share one from high school because it's kind of funny. It was during, I think it was my, it was my freshman or sophomore year of school. It was like right before I cut this stuff off where I had this dream about um, my crush of seven years. Look, I don't, I'm not attracted to people often, but when I am, I'm like, I love you long time and there's nothing I can do about it. It's terrible. So I was smitten with this person for a, like half my life at that point and um, didn't do anything about it, was just utterly petrified of him and made a point to avoid him at all costs. <laughs> and so this, this particular night, I dreamt that he was moved into my AP history class. And I woke up like kind of panicked because I'm like, oh God, like he's gonna be in the same class as me. And the next day, the next day I walk into my AP history class and he's sitting exactly where he was in my dream two rows over and I almost threw up on myself. <laughs> I had nowhere to run. Run. Then during my teens, the precognitive dreams stopped and they just started again. I had two uh, this year, one at the very beginning of the year, 2021, and one this past November. And so the one at the beginning of the year, this is when I worked at my old company before I manifested my dream job. And that's so funny I said that because someone just slacked me. Just a moment. Five minutes later. So before I manifested the dream job, I was working at a company where I had a lot of different roles. And one of the things I did was lead a team of designers and developers in building website themes for the HubSpot CMS. Am I talking like a nerd? Um, okay, let me, let me rephrase. Myself and a team of other nerds entered a highly competitive event for nerds. And two days before the winners were announced, I actually dreamed that we won. But what was really interesting about this dream is that it was not like the dreams I had as a child where it was a, a replay or more like a preplay of what was going to happen. It was entirely in symbolism. And I grasped the imagery instantly, like I knew what it meant. And I think the reason it happened like this, um, rather than like seeing it like a movie, like it would happen in, in real life, but seeing it in um, symbols was because it wasn't, the dream didn't end up translating to just one thing. It was actually like a series of events at the end of the year. So let me explain. In the dream, I was shuffling a deck of tarot cards. Tarot is a divination system uh, that dates back to like 14th century Italy. And it's what our 
the cards that most people are familiar with, like playing cards, are based off of tarot. And so it's structured in the same way that a, or similarly to how a regular deck of cards is with like, you know, your, your four different suites and your court cards and that kind of stuff. But as I was shuffling this in the dream, a card flew out that doesn't exist in tarot. And I just instantly understood what this card meant. And so the imagery was this beautiful golden bell that was like, it looked like it was clanging in a breeze or something and it was glinting in the sunlight. And there was this rainbow stream of confetti that was like making its way diagonally across the card. And I was like, it felt like full of celebration and joy and fulfillment. And I woke up the next morning and I still had that feeling. And I was like, wow, we won hackathon. Like I just knew. Fast forward a couple of days and we did win hackathon. Fast forward a couple more days and the company has its end of year party and I was awarded the their like MVP award. And the same feeling of like that, um, the joy and the celebration and the fulfillment, uh, I, I had that again at that moment. And so it was just really interesting to have that particular experience of, of precognitive dreams where it was like an emotion that made its way back uh, back into my dreams. And the most recent dream I had was also precognitive, but uh, different than the other two also. And so in this particular dream, it was about a person who I had trained with for a little while when I went to a different gym. And when I knew him, when I was training in that space, he had a pregnant wife that was in another country. Something weird had happened with like visas or whatever. They were moving from another country and had, they had unfortunately gotten separated, which I imagine must've been awful with a baby on the way. Um, but I had left that gym last spring. And then this November, I, and I'm, I'm not in touch with those people, but this November I, dreamed, it was like, I think it was on the 15th, I had a dream about this man holding up a newborn son and they had like the same eyes and he seemed, he seemed happy, but also he was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know if that part is accurate, but I went um, and looked him up on social media and come to find out, looks like his wife finally made her way back into this country. They have a happy, healthy baby that looks a son that looks just like I saw it in my dream. It was very weird. And I was like, I don't know why I'm dreaming about that, but power to you. I'm sending, I'm sending blessings and good witchy energy. There you have it. A host of experiences that are sort of testament to why I believe what I believe. If I hadn't had these experiences, I would not be part of this world. But to be honest, I feel like I can't get away from it. It's like, it sort of just clubbed me over my head and has been dragging me by my hair. And I have surrendered to it at this point. I'm like, this stuff exists, which is actually kind of exciting when you think about it. And now I'm on a mission to figure out like the how, the why, and the potential applications. I'm like, if this, if this is real and I have every reason to believe that it is, this represents our greatest untapped potential as human beings. And so how do we harness this? How can we use this to create better lives for ourselves and a better world? And that's uh, one of the big questions that we're playing with here on Idea Sex. So if you are interested in joining the quest, do subscribe and join the guild. In any case, thank you so much for joining me on Ideas X today. Hail to the power and the sight. And until next time, I hope you stay very, very blessed.